What's going on guys and welcome back to another video on Atlas Empires. We are very excited about the video today as the alpha has finally been released. <laughs> the day of miracles has come! So as most of you that have access to the alpha already know, there currently isn't much to do in the testing stage of the game, but we still want to show you guys some of the in-game footage for those of you who haven't seen what it looks like yet. If you're excited for this game and can't wait to see more about it, go ahead and hit that thumbs up. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, as we will continue to release more videos as the alpha version gets more content added to it, and the game gears up for release. What's up guys, we're going to go over some of the game footage. Just as a reminder, this is the alpha version, which is a very primitive version of the game right now. But we still wanted to show you guys how the game will look. So once you've opened up the app and logged in, this is what you'll see. As you can see, there's already a tower that has been placed in the area, but we're going to show you the process of building one right now. So as we mentioned in our previous video, you'll be given a land deed to redeem for a parcel where you'll be placed in your tower. Once you click on the land deed, you'll see a grid of parcels that you'll be able to select from based on your location. So let's click on this one here. Keep in mind, once you place your tower, you won't be able to move it. So make sure you find a place that works for you. Now we're going to go ahead and click on our tower and start constructing some other buildings around it. So as you can see, there is another grid here, and these are going to be known as lots. Ah. Stop it. This is where you construct other buildings. In order to start building, you'll select the build icon, which will open up a menu on the buildings that you have available. As you can see, there are different categories of buildings to choose from, and once the full game is available, there will be different costs and build times associated with each type of building. So right now, let's build a training ground. As you can see, there is some customization on where you can place the building around your tower. We'll go ahead and select one more building here. We'll select a defensive building, which is called a sentry. Now that we have a couple buildings built, let's go back into the world. You can see that there are chests and mercenaries all around the map. If they are in your line of sight, you can click on them to collect them. Let's go ahead and click on this chest to see what we get. As you can see, we're getting a couple different materials that we discussed in our previous video. Now looking at the mercenaries, you will be able to click on them in order to recruit them. However, currently in the alpha, that feature is not made available yet. That's really all of the in-game content that we have to share with you today, but as new updates take place, there'll be plenty more features for us to cover for you guys. So let's talk a little bit more about how the recruitment process will work. As you saw in the footage, the mercenaries will be running around on the map, and like we said, you'll need to click on them to play a mini game in order to recruit them. As long as the mercenaries in your field of vision, you'll be able to click on them. When first getting started in the game, you're going to see a lot of the more common mercenaries, but as you progress and do a little searching, you'll start to see some of the more rare mercenaries. As of right now, there will be four different mercenaries in the game, and we will explain what those are right now. So the first mercenary we're going to talk about is the Axeman. The Axeman is going to be the most common mercenary in the game. Chances are you'll find him pretty much anywhere. The Axeman only does melee damage, so he'll have to be pretty close to whatever he's attacking. If you want to attack with the Axeman, make sure you have plenty of them, as they have a relatively low base health stat, and they'll be more likely to be the first ones to die in battle. The next one we're going to talk about is the Archer. The Archer is a little less common than the Axeman, but still fairly available. She is currently one of two units that will have a ranged attack. Since the Archer is a little bit weaker, having a lower base health stat, she's going to be the first one to die. However, given her ranged attack, she'll likely outsurvive the Axeman. The next one we're going to go over is the Samurai. The Samurai is going to be fairly rare in the game. It is going to be the fastest foot unit in the game. And one special thing about the Samurai is that it has an ability to increase the marching speed of those units around him. He has the most amount of hit points or health in the game, so he'll be able to absorb the most amount of damage. And the final mercenary we're going to talk about today is going to be the Wizard. The Wizard is considered ultra rare in the game, so good luck finding her. As you can see, she has a range attack type of two tiles, which is a little bit shorter than the archer, but given that she has a few more hit points, we're assuming she'll be able to survive a little bit longer. And given that the wizard is ultra rare, we can assume that she'll be able to deal the most amount of damage than any other mercenary currently available in the game. Now eventually, Atlas Empires will most likely be releasing more recruits into the game as things progress, but this looks like what we're going to have to start with. Now that we've covered the mercenaries and how the recruiting process works, let's talk a little bit more about how to train your mercenaries. 
Once you collect any of the mercenaries, you can train your troops up through augmented reality minigames. These can be played whenever and wherever you want, and the type of minigame might differ based on the type of attacker the mercenary is. Currently, there are two attack types associated with the mercenaries, one of those being a melee attacker, which will fight in close combat, and the other being a ranged attacker that will fight from a safer distance. Each attack type you train will gain XP and level up to get bigger and better stats. So as you collect each type of mercenary, it will then unlock the minigame associated with that attack type at the training ground for you. Once you recruit a mercenary, you can then recruit more by building a barracks by your main tower. Players can use the barracks to recruit troops with gold, and as you recruit more, troops will start to fill up army slots until they've reached their max capacity. So upgrading your barracks will be crucial as it will allow you to recruit more mercenaries to attack other bases. So in short, bigger barracks, bigger army. So now let's talk about houses and how you can make the biggest return on your investment by flipping your house. Wait, sorry, sorry. Old habits. So the in-game house is going to hold your citizens in your base and it will generate gold for you while you're gone. The more citizens you have, the more gold you will generate. Something to keep in mind is that citizens are going to need food, which leads us to the next thing we're going to talk about, which are farms. Farms will produce food for your citizens, so keeping the balance between how many farms and citizens you have is important in order to make sure they are well fed. As we just mentioned a minute ago, your citizens are generating gold for you, but where are you supposed to keep all of this gold? The treasury is where your gold will be stored. The amount of gold that you can have at any time is limited to the space in your treasury. Upon the game's release, you will be able to build two treasuries in your base to store your gold. Gold is used to fund just about everything in the game, so you'll be needing a lot of that space. And you know how much we love our gold. I love gold! That's right, and some of the things you'll be spending that gold on will be stuff like lumber outposts and stone quarries. The lumber outpost and stone quarry are buildings you'll place outside of your main base once you find additional land claims. These will generate wood and stone for you while you're gone. Also, make sure you place it somewhere secluded or else people walking by will be able to pillage it. Next, you're going to have to have a place to store all these materials, so let's talk about those now. Stone storage and lumber yard. These are both pretty self-explanatory. Obviously, they're going to be where you store your stone and your wood. Both of these materials are going to be used in construction, and they will be essential in base building and progression, so you'll definitely want to stock up on them. But keep in mind, you can only hold as much as your storage will allow. Like the outposts, it would also be wise to put these in a safe place in case your base gets raided. Woo! Call me Dr. Seuss. <clears throat> um, anyways, uh, speaking of being raided, how are you supposed to defend yourself? Well, that brings us to the turret and the sentry. These are both defensive buildings that you'll place at your main base, and they will attack intruders once they get within a certain proximity to them. So, as you can see, these will be pretty essential in helping protect everything you built. As of right now, that is all the information that we have on the buildings and mercenaries currently in the game. This should provide you with a lot of information on what to expect from Atlas Empires. Again, please make sure to check out their website and Facebook page if you'd like to help support the game. We will continue to upload additional videos on Atlas Empires, including more gameplay as more features are being released in the alpha. So if you would like to stay updated, please make sure to subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching and as always, we'll see you next time. Peace!